because when I switch hats and talk just about elder abuse, caregiving comes up because that is the most likely person to abuse an elder, someone who is providing them care. Uh, the, the work forward in the Affordable Care Act with the Elder Justice Act is very, very positive. Uh, this law has been around for 10 years. The Affordable Care Act was the vehicle to move it forward. It's a policy issue we I'm passionate about. We must continue to promote. Um, but it's authorizing language. Um, in my observation, 20 years in government, actually, you can do more with money. So, you know, at some point, uh, being able to follow authorizing language up with appropriation language, uh, it will be the best one to punch, right? just one. Uh, we have support in the President's budget for us in 2012 to continue to advance the cause. Uh, he has given us $15 million specifically to continue to focus on elder abuse, elder justice activities. I talk regularly to the Elder Justice Coalition and the group that's worked so hard for 10 years to get that passed. There has never been a federal home for adult protective services work, a dedicated federal funding stream for APS, and I just think it's important that we talk about community, we talk about elders, and we figure out how to design systems so that um, people under someone else's care don't become invisible. That if we're providing support for the caregiver, the care recipient is seen. This reminds me of, in some way, the protocols that were needed in the 70s and 80s with regard to domestic violence. Remember when we did this work? We said, because I've done domestic violence work. Okay, cops, you have to interview the battered woman when he's not around. Okay, doctor, he can't be in the emergency room with you. You need to interview her. That we had protocols in place because it's like this person is vulnerable. We're not going to say the same thing with this person in the room. We have to go back and work with our elder abuse advocates and professionals to do the same thing for individuals who are receiving care by someone else so that we have professionals at the table who can start helping us detect what's going on. Uh, I've talked to caregivers before, and this is hard, hard work, and we want to make sure we can support them, but support the senior, and never elevate one over the other, but realize this dynamic, uh, not all families are uh, what you would hope to see. Uh, some families are abusive, and how can we provide protections in the area of elder abuse? Uh, fourth thing I want to talk about before we do Q&A. This issue of care transitions to me is very, very exciting. Uh, CMS and their Innovation Center is working on what do we do to provide better supports in a transition of care. Every time a senior moves to a different care setting, they're vulnerable. So if you move from the home to the hospital, the nursing home to back, to, I mean, any time you move, where did your medicine go? What supports do you have? Do you have a caregiver at the table? Uh, these fractured systems that we have built and are now trying to overcome of acute care and long-term care and community services don't serve us well all the time as people move from place to place. I think one of the most promising pieces of the Affordable Care Act for all of us moving forward is how we pay attention to transitions in care. We've been working with our network to provide additional education about good evidence-based practices and the care transition programs that work best, but the person in the center and, and assess their needs, talk about the caregivers, the supports at the table, uh, bring the doctors. You know, some of my favorite people to talk to about care transitions are geriatricians, because they say that's how our practice has always worked. A geriatrician has always had to pay attention to the senior and everything else in the senior's life. That's what we need all providers to do. Uh, and there are many different opportunities coming out through CMS, but because we started and agreed that all of these issues are women's issues, Care transition is a women's issue as well, because we have so much transition among the senior population moving from place to place. These are wonderful, wonderful uh, opportunities for us all. I see that Congresswoman has joined us, so I'm going to just say howdy and, and wind it down. I, um, I will stick around. I want to be able to um, answer questions and talk to you all. Uh, I hang out in nursing homes. <laughs> I, I, you know, and I told my staff when I first started, if you ever forget why we're doing this work, you have my permission to leave work during the day and visit a nursing home. I mean, I, I, I find it, nursing homes to be completely inspirational places. Sometimes you're inspired and just mad. But sometimes you're just inspired by the value of the people and their contributions. And I always have an experience. I talk to residents. I, I, I had the opportunity to do this more when I was the Secretary of Aging in Kansas, but I've been to dozens of nursing homes. And I have all of these memories and events. 
And one in particular was when I visited the Presbyterian Manor in Wichita many years ago. And actually my grandmother had been in this facility, but she had, she had passed away by that point. And I was sitting at the reception. I spoke. We had a little reception. I was sitting at the table in the lobby with three old women and me. And they were all talking about their strokes. I was really, I, I felt so left out. I didn't really want to have a stroke. But they had survived it. And this was now their common conversation. And they were proud, and they were together, and they were active. And if there's any need to prove that this is a women's issue, go to a nursing home and see the fabulous women there who need our support. Thank you all.